All right, well, good morning, everyone. I think everyone can hear me, I hope. Um, I think it's uh, it's 10.01, so we've got enough people here. Maybe we can get started. All right, I'm told you can all hear me. Um, well, first of all, thanks very much for uh, joining me today uh, so we, to learn a little bit about PyMT. I'm just gonna give you a very brief description of PyMT today, and maybe in some future uh, webinars, we can get a little bit more into the, the details. Um, so <clears throat> PyMT is uh, CSTMS's Python modeling toolkit. It used to actually form the back end to what we call the, the web modeling tool, which was basically a graphical interface that users could use to, to run models and to couple models. But we decided we'd try to clean that up and bring it out and expose it to the community uh, so developers and model uh, users can run models directly through Python and through a, uh, an interactive environment. So um, most of this presentation is gonna be based on the documentation page for PyMT. And um, uh, let's see, so Mark, actually, if you're paying attention, maybe can you put the link in the, uh, in the chat? It's pymt.readthedocs.io. And this would be the place that you would go to for all things related to PyMT. Um, and so before we continue, um, as you probably know, CSMS, um, well, used to be housed at the University of Colorado, but recently we moved into Hogwarts. And so today I'm coming to you from the Great Hall at Hogwarts. So if it sounds a little echoey, um, I apologize. So I'm gonna take you through, first of all, uh, the documentation page here, and <clears throat> take you through some useful links that we have. And these are to the left under useful links. So I'll start from the bottom here. The first thing is the issue tracker. So we'd recommend that if you have any questions, um, any feature requests, you find any bugs, you want a new model to be introduced into PyMT, this would be the place you would go. Um, you can also send me an email directly or CSMS an email directly, but we'd rather you go there. So if I click on the issue tracker, you can see it'll take us to GitHub. And to, uh, <clears throat> to file a new issue, you just have to click the green button and then fill out the issue. You could label it as a bug, um, a question, you know, uh, an enhancement if you want to add a new, some new, um, a new model, or you'd like us to add a new model. So that would be the place to go. This would allow, especially for bugs, or if you run into any problems, other people can also see the issues so that they can, um, so if you fix it, they can look to, you, to your solution to fix their problem. As I just showed you, PyMT is also in, on GitHub, as is all CSMS software. Um, so this is the, CSM, the PyMT repository. And we absolutely welcome pull requests. We would love it if you fork PyMT. And if you have find a bug and you can fix it or you have an enhancement or whatever, maybe, or even just documentation, the documentation is all um, added here. Maybe just a typo you found. Um, please submit a pull request and we'll review it as quickly as we can and get it into the main branch. <clears throat> uh, let's see, so the next one will be the PyMT plugin. So plugins here refers to models. So these are models that are part of PyMT. So I'm not gonna talk about this too much today. This will also be in a future webinar perhaps. This is just a list of repositories with light wrappings of models written in different languages so that we can bring them into PyMT. So for this first case, we have Child, which is a C++ program that has a BMI. And there's a very light wrapping here because all of these models expose a BMI, we can automatically wrap each of them so that they can be imported into PyMT and well, just Python in general. So this is where they would be housed. I'm not gonna say any more about that. Uh, we'll save that for another time. And then finally, uh, PyMT is installable from Conda Forge. So if anyone uses the Anaconda Python distribution, they would know that Conda is a package manager that they use. And so we tap into that. So all uh, CSDMS products are Conda installable. So that means we build 
for all of our packages, as well as all the contributed models to PyMT. We have Conda recipes that build pre-built binary uh, libraries for each of the models and all our software so that they can easily be installed on different platforms without users having to compile them. And this eliminates a lot of headaches for us and for model developers. Now, if so all the products that CSTMS writes are going to be compatible with Windows and Linux and Mac, and if Python is involved, we're only going to support Python 3 from now on. That's a choice we made. It just simplifies things a lot on our end. If people contribute models that haven't been written for all of those platforms, um, until we port them to those platforms or someone ports them to those platforms, they won't be available. That's not something that we automatically do. So for instance, many people, uh, model developers, developers will write their models to work for Linux and then Mac. So I think all of the contributed models we have now will work for Linux and Mac, but not all of them will work for Windows, for instance. But we can definitely port them over if possible, or if, if there's a demand. So those are some places you can go to uh, to get some help with PyMT. So now we can dig into PyMT just a little bit more. So just in three points, uh, PyMT is uh, one, it's a collection of coupling tools. It's a toolbox that includes tools for coupling models that operate on different computational grids. Uh, most of our models, I suppose, operate on a uniform rectilinear grid, but many of them also operate on unstructured grids or even a different uniform rectilinear grid that, of a different resolution. So we include uh, model coupling tools like the ESMF mapper, grid mapper to map values from one grid to the values of uh, a grid for another component. They'll operate sometimes at different time steps and we may have to do some time interpolation. So we have tools for that so that we can uh, advance a model. If we need to advance a model to a partial time step and it's not able to do that internally, we can keep trip, we can uh, interpolate between, the, between two time steps so that the models can sync up and exchange values at the correct time. So we have lots of tools like that, um, but again, I'm not gonna talk about that today. That could be a, a future webinar as well. I'm gonna talk about these next two things. So PyMT is primarily a collection of Earth surface models that are importable and runnable within Python, interactively within Python. All these models have been imported because they import, because they expose a basic model interface. Um, once they're in PyMT, we then decorate this basic model interface, make it a little more human usable. The BMI was really intended at first for machines to talk to one another. And it may seem a little clunky to use interactively within Python. So we've tidied that up a little bit and made it a little bit more polished in Python and PyMT. And then it's also an extensible plugin framework so that we can easily add new models into PyMT as they come in. Um, so that would require wrapping them with a very light wrapper, as I mentioned before. Uh, we do that with models written in C and C++ and Fortran and, of course, Python. Um, there's been some requests to include additional languages, and depending on the demand, we may go down that road as well. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here a little bit <clears throat> and jump into the quick start just to show you what, how, what it would be like to install PyMT. So this would be if you're installing PyMT as a, as a user. So as a developer, you can, of course, install it from source, but the users would normally install it uh, with Conda. So Conda is a package manager. So Conda install PyMT, and then this dash C Conda Forge just tells it where to look. So Conda Forge is an online repository of Conda packages, and that is where we publish all of our, uh, all of our packages, including all of the models that are included into Py in PyMT. And whether they are um, Python, uh, whether they are Python or C or whatever, they're included as pre-compiled binaries. Um, 
sorry, I was looking at the chat, I got uh, distracted. Um, and then, so as I said, so that would, that would install the base model of, of um, PyMT, the base, uh, the core PyMT. Uh, then if you want to install an additional model, so a plugin, you could install as a separate package. So here we would install, con install PyMT HydroTrend. And so this would download HydroTrend, a pre-built version of HydroTrend. It's a C model. Um, so that it can be imported into PyMT. So that's how you would install PyMT. Now I'm gonna run through just how you might wanna use a model that is in PyMT. And so I'm gonna jump over here to a Jupyter Notebook. And uh, actually I'll start a new notebook. Python 3. Okay, and so we're going to uh, install, we're going to use uh, the Ku model, and I'll explain this in a little bit more. It's a specific permafrost model, uh, just as an example. So first you do, so from pymt.models, how about we do import pymt.models. So this will import all the models that are currently in my uh, installation of PyMT. If you just installed the, the default version, you wouldn't have all of these. Um, so this is just a collection of a bunch of models. Some of them are C, C++. Uh, but we're gonna look at this one called Ku. And I'm gonna use that for a couple of reasons. One, it's available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's one of the few, unfortunately, that we have for Windows. Uh, but maybe most importantly, um, I'm gonna use that because it's the shortest name and uh, it's easier for me to type so and it's easy and, it, and it, uh, it runs quickly so we can we don't have to wait for things to to uh to run when we start to run it so we'll begin by um so we imported all the models now we're just going to instantiate one of the models so we have a model called ku now uh, it's an instance of an object uh, we can get help on it like we can with all objects in Python. So if we uh, get some help on Kud, we'll give a brief description of it. This is provided by the model authors. Um, and then we want to list the model authors, uh, the version, and just some metadata that goes along with the model. Uh, we want to make, make it absolutely clear that this model is not a CSMS model, uh, even though it's within PyMT. So we don't want to take credit for it. So we want to be very careful that the, who <clears throat> that it um, the credit is taken by or is given to the model authors and uh, there's external links if you want to find more specific help about the model itself uh, and then it lists a bunch of parameters that we can set with the ku model and i'll get to that in just a little bit so i'll get rid of that now the first thing we want to do before we run a model and this is i'm going to be saying this over and over again so i'm sorry if i repeat myself but i will um, so we're just looking at the Ku model now, but everything we do here will apply to all the models in PyMT. They all have the same interface and the same methods. And so anything that works with this should work with another model. So when you're um, going to run a model, the first thing you need to do is set up all the input files. And this isn't a BMI method. Uh, this is something that PyMT adds to your model. And so this we call a method called setup. And what setup will do will stay, create a new directory and stage a new model run based on some input parameters. So I'm, we're just going to do this. This is going to, just going to do the defaults. And you'll see that it's created or it's returned a tuple of two strings. The first is the name of the configuration file it created. And the second is the folder that it created it in. So by default, it'll create it in a temporary folder. And we do that because the user never actually really has to see this. I'm gonna take you through a little bit today just so you can see what's going on in the background. Um, but if you really did want to uh, create in a separate folder, maybe in your home directory or current directory, you can do that as well. So let's see, so I'm just gonna show you what's in this folder we just created. So these are, all these text files were, were just created by this setup method. And then if we, then we can look at the um, configuration file that I just created. Uh, 
I think this is constructed. So this is the configuration file that we just created. So you know, it looks like a, an input file, but it's a very specific format. It's specific to the Perma Model Toolbox. And, um, and all our models like this, all, all the models all have their own input file formats. Um, so what we want to do with PyMT is try to abstract that away and make it so that people don't have to worry about all these formats and they can just programmatically create and stage new model runs. So if we go back to our, our help, I said there were uh, a bunch of parameters. If we scroll down here a little bit. So all these parameters, so these are all parameters that we can set at the beginning of the model run that are put into the input file. So for instance, here's one, T error. So I, this is the air temperature. And it's um, short and easy to type, so I'm again gonna use that one. So the default for air temperature is minus nine degrees Celsius. So we'll, I don't know, we'll set it up to do something else. So we do set up T air equals, say minus, 5.0. So now we've created an input file with uh, these new parameters, hopefully. I say hopefully, but of course. So if we go down here, we should be able to find T air. And so now it's set it to minus 5.0. So this is an easy way. So the setup method is an easy way to create new input files. And it's something that PyMT provides on top of your model. Uh, I'm going to show you one useful thing that we can do with this, and we're going to enhance this in the future. So this is, I'll just show you this um, as something that we are going to add to make it a little bit easier, but you can do this now. Uh, um, so I got that a little backwards, but uh, so for, so we're going to create a whole bunch of input files now. So let's see, so we'll create a bunch of T errors from 95 or from minus 20 to 5. Um, and then we're going to do the Q.setup. setup. T error equals and then the, this particular T error. So now we've just set up a, a sensitivity study on for T. See, we, we'll see how T error affects the outputs of the Ku model. Um, so we just set up 50 model runs there. And then you can either go in, you know, from outside of Python and just run the Ku model from the command line on each of these. Maybe send it to a cluster to run on different nodes, or you can run it different subprocesses within Python. But it's an easy way to create a, a sensitivity study. We, in the future, are going to try to incorporate Dakota a little more into PyMT so we can make this even easier and you can construct more, uh, more advanced uh, experiments like uh, uncertainty quantification. And we'll probably, to do that, we'll probably use our, we have some Python wrappers for Dakota and we'll probably use those to, to get that into PyMT. Um, okay, so now, so let's, uh, let's start again with a new, models.coo, so create a new coo. We'll set it up, just the defaults. And now we'll start to get into some BMI methods. And so now that we've set up uh, a new model run, we need to initialize the coo model. So in this step, we're gonna read in the input files, allocate some memory, do that, that sort of stuff. Do everything that needs to be done before the model time stepping begins. So we'll do ku initialize. We'll pass those arguments to it. So now it's initializing the ku model. So now we're ready to go. Now we can start time stepping and uh, examining the variable, the calculated variables. And so let's, so we can look at, a, so there's lots of different methods we can look at. Ku, uh, so this is the current time in the model. Um, and where are the units? The units are years. Uh, then to advance the model through time, we just do the update method. And now we should have, uh, so right now time one. Okay, so now we know how to advance a model, any BMI or any PyMT model through, through time. Uh, now we need to get some values out of it. So it just did some work and calculated something. So let's take advantage of that and uh, see what happened. 
So we would to do that we would use the the get value uh, method, and then the first method, the first argument is a string that is the name of the argument the uh, variable that we want to get. So since we're not familiar with this particular model, we need to know what those strings are. So we'll just use the, we can just use the attribute output var names. And so this returns a tuple of, in this case, two strings. It could be many more, or it could be none at all. Although it wouldn't make much sense to have a model with output variables. So here we have soil temperature and soil active layer thickness. And so let's look at uh, val calculated values for uh, soil uh, temperature. So this get value method, if you're familiar with BMI, is very much like that, but we've decorated it with a few um, a few additional keywords. So it can, and I'll just get into that in a little bit. And in this case, it'll allocate a new mem a new a new array for you, um, or you can pass a buffer to place values into. So soil temperature. So this is new calculate soil temperature, but um, what are the units for this? So uh, so PyMT adds a dictionary to your component uh, called var that has the information about each of the variables. So in this case, we have soil temperature, and we see that the units are, uh, are degrees Celsius. So if we go back here, so that's degrees Celsius, but say we have a component that wants to use different units. So we make that we make it easy so that you can get a value in particular units if you like as well. So if you want to change the units, uh, so we do that through a units keyword, and we just pass a string for the new unit. So we can get um, so this is the answer in degrees Rankin. So if you ever have a model that runs in Rankin, four seventy nine is your answer for this thing. So again, so I've taken you through the very basic steps. I know it seems pretty simple. But I think just I hope just by this you've learned how to run a very simple model, Ku model, um, with some easy steps. And again, this will apply to all the models in PyMT. So if you understand the setup, the initialize, the update, the get and set values, you've under, you understand how to run a, a complete model. I'm going to jump over to another example now, still using the Ku model, and this will show how to couple it to. In this case, I'm not going to couple it to another model exactly. I'm going to couple it to a data set. And this data set is going to be some temperatures from Barrow, Alaska from 1961 to 2015. Um, but I could just as easily couple it to another BMI model or a, a data set that's been wrapped with a BMI. But in this case, it's going to just, I'm going to couple it with a pandas data set. So we go and get the uh, the data set and you can see the data set here so i've just downloaded it from github it has three columns of data each column is uh so we have uh, air temperature snowpack depth and then the temperature amplitude i'm not i think temperature amplitude is probably the uh the difference in the highs and lows um, so i'm going to assign now just each column to a to a variable um, and then the next step, as I did before, I'm just going to instantiate Ku, set it up, run the initialize method, and then now I'm going to start time stepping. So we have a, a for loop here that time steps through each of the years. I think there were 50 years. And so now instead of calling the get value, we're calling a set value. So in Ku, we're going to say Ku.set value, and then this is the input of our name, um, and then we're going to uh, pass it the the, val the appropriate value from our data set. We're going to do that for the three values. Then we're going to update Ku for a new uh, for the new time step and save the thickness. And there we go. And then so now we've run Ku through a time st um, through a data set, a time series from a data set, and created uh, some output. So this would not have been po poss easily possible from the, a previous version of Ku. So what we've done here is abstract away the, so I think you could have done this statically with a, an input data set with Ku, would have had been a particular uh, file format. So here we've used pandas 
to get the to bring in a, a data set and then we've coupled that to the model so that we can dynamically change the values as the model runs so that's basically everything that I wanted to cover for the most part so I've shown you how to um, how to <clears throat> how to bring a model how to import a model into PyMT um, and again, this could be any model. If you know how to use one model, you're going to know how to use them all and then how easy it is to run it. So I think as a model user, you'll find PyMT very easy to use, um, very powerful uh, when you want a couple models or if you just want to run a single model and experiment with it. I find it's a very easy way to play with models, particularly compared to working with models from compiled languages like C. You know, it's almost as though you're running in, in a debugger. You can run it for a little bit, change some values, see what happens, see if the model blows up, see if something cool happens. Um, see if there's a bug, you can, you, know, you can advance it through time and see if there's uh, instability. And you can use all the power of Python and all the tools that go along with Python as you're doing all this. You can advance it through time, change some things, and plot up some results. And then, so as a model developer, I think you'll also find it useful to use PyMT and to get your models into PyMT. And we'll, we'll do a few things for you that maybe it wasn't obvious um, from this presentation so far that we do for you. So if you have a, a model and you put a BMI on it, that's 90% of the work. From there, we can automatically wrap it to bring it into PyMT. And in doing so, you get a bunch of advantages. So for instance, you can use um, your model. We will build your model as a Conda package so it's easily installable. We'll do that for you. So you don't have to have an installation guide for your model for other users, perhaps. You can just point them to, to our help pages and they can easily install a, through Conda install, uh, a pre-built binary version of your model, which is very useful for uh, compiled languages like C. We will um, provide the, all this documentation on, on our website for you, so you can just point them here. We'll, have a we'll construct a tutorial for your model as a Jupyter Notebook and provide it on our web, on our uh, documentation page as well. You can see from, this is from the main page, um, under examples, um, we have, these are all Jupyter notebooks of some of the models that we have, and we'll add that to this for you so that users can see that it's working. We will test these models regularly, or test these notebooks regularly. We will include your model and model tests into our continuous integrations. We'll test it regularly so users can be sure that it's working properly. Um, as well as people will be then be able to use it within the PyMT framework or within a Python framework just in general. So we'll do all these things for you. Uh, if you and, and and we might just give you a, a CSMS shirt if you BMI your model. I'm just saying that. I haven't run that by Lynn yet, but I think we could do that. Um, and we would love to have your model within PyMT. Um, you know, just a, a, a quick story. I, just, to, just how powerful this is. I think the, you know, someone recently asked me for a model that I wrote many years ago in C. And I was responding to them. I was just writing this long email about how to compile it and all these crazy input file formats that I had come up with on my own. And then as I was writing this, I realized, no, 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 no. I just have to point them to this web page, and they can just use the PyMT version of it. And it's so much easier for them. Um, we just would provide all this documentation for you. They can just go through this, and then they'll know how to use the model. And if they're familiar with another PyMT model, they'll know how to use it right away. Um, so anyway, I, I, think, I think that's all I had to say. It's right at 10.30, so that was my goal. Anyway. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to, you can contact me directly or go to our issue tracker page. Or if you have any questions right now, I'd be happy to, to answer them. Thanks.